Welcome back to another video and today we will be doing my March and April collective makeup haul. Another two months have gone by and it's time for my two monthly makeup haul. So these are products that got I got during the March and April and uh, comparing to the first video that I did from February and January this there is quite a lot of stuff in front of me but um, that's how it usually goes at least when I sort of compare to my lack of how much I got products last year this seems to be quite typical that in the beginning of the year it's a bit slower something that this did sort of make this uh, maybe a bit bigger was that there is actually a my, my monolith haul is included in this one and that, that I think is actually some a haul that I made during February however the, I think the products didn't arrive, arrive to me until March so that is why they are sort of included here but let's now get through I did try to group these uh, sort of kind of within brand so there would be some like um, some uh, as a team or something like going on here and so but yeah let's get to them so first I think we will be going through the something that I filmed just a while ago so I got this one so this is the Beauty Bay Reckless Romance palette this was their Valentine's palette but I actually ordered this after the Valentine's and this is how it looks like and this is now in my two week rotation so we will see how I will be feeling about this one after some time but so far liking it and with Beauty Bay always not good quality for drugstore especially if you live in UK and Europe then let's go to some Maybelline products. So I think Maybelline is definitely a brand that um, is more of a product that I occasionally buy staple products from rather than something that exci something exciting. But uh, for this is the first one is the sort of Maybelline Fireworks Mascara. So this is actually quite of a new mascara from them. I will open this up. This is the mascara I'm actually currently wearing. And I, if you want to see like how I feel about this, at least based on first impressions, there should be a first impressions video that has gone uh, out first. So if you want sort of more, uh, more thoughts on how I feel about this, then watch the video. But that's also something that's I think the new mascara that I got. And oh, but I forgot to say this when I started this. Uh, some products that I got have been already decluttered, so I or already used those up, or there is some other reason that I didn't want to keep them around. They were maybe the wrong shade or something else so those won't be included this one so this includes the products that have i sort of uh, am testing out currently or ha i have decided that are i allowed to stay in my collection uh another so, like then the second maybelline product is this one so as i said it's stable so i decided to try the fig me powder ignore that the powder is a bit uh a bit dirty i had some incident accidentally putting in a foundation brush in this one but luckily the powder has, doesn't seem to have suffered from this i mean i think it's still good to like it has been like good to go despite it having a bit of an accident so testing this out with powders I usually want to use them up before giving my final sauce but so far I've been liking this then let's get to some drugstore so or more more drugstore so um from uh let's actually go to the like the foundation so this is the skin silk foundation from makeup revolution this is the foundation i'm currently running wearing i'm almost out of this this was already included in a collective review video so if you want to see my final thoughts about this one uh check out my review playlist so you will see how i thought about this one uh i did have to order this online as i said we do have a makeup revolution retailer in our country but they don't seem to get like all of the products and some of the products come out very very late so i actually went and ordered this online because i want to try it out uh, second makeup revolution product this is actually another another one that's in the first impressions video going out before this one so this is their bright light uh, liquid highlighter so i do think that as you will see in this video the team of the couple of two months have been highlighters and especially liquid highlighters and you will be using more of this one but this is the makeup revolution sort of try on let us try on the liquid highlighter trend then a lip product so this is their this was from their valentine's uh, collect like their valentine's release this year was a lip tint so this is the pout tint and this was also something that i have already reviewed it's in the like, my latest collective makeup review video so if you want to also again see thoughts about this one this one watch it but um this is a nice nice pinkish shade only thing that i said that i don't like how this initially feels and smells and tastes on my lips but uh i do like the shade and so the effect it gives on the lips uh then i think what which was a more sort of an uh, so far something that i have liked a lot so these are their sort of uh powder highlighters but what were these called being bright yeah being bright uh sort of baked highlighters and this is in the shade pink seduction this is how the well, it looks like and this has been at least I have felt that even though it's maybe a bit I do have to like watch what kind of blush I wear, wear with this one but so far this I think I've been liking this a lot 
And those were the Revolution products. And let, next, let's go to, I think, Essence would be a good continuation. So Essence, uh, Essence is spring edit stuff. I already discussed this on some other video. It was a bit of a hassle to get all of them, but I finally did manage to get the stuff that I wanted. Uh, something that's not included this one, for example, is the Call Me The Queen Mascara. I have used that up already and decluttered it, and you have also seen that on my review video, but I, I don't like, like... I, did, I don't want to keep like stuff because I have a very limited storage for my makeup. So uh, if, I, if I don't use something or it's used up, then I just throw it away. But just so aware that that is something that was also included with this and stuff. Uh, first was this one. So I got one of the slim stick uh, lipsticks. So these were their new sort of matte matte lipsticks and I did give this this one quite of a good review and I said that I think especially for fall this kind of wine shade will be something that I will be liking but a one of the I think uh, generally the essence like spring edit stuff was quite good good this year uh, then the magic filter this was again another favorite this is their again uh, another drugstore try to the sort of liquid highlighter trend we're having but this is actually a very good one if you're able to get a shade in this because as I said essence is very terrible at doing shade ranges but if you have a fair and light skin then this is actually a good recommendation then the, I got one of the baby got blush so this was their liquid blush they have three shades from this one uh, another good drugstore liquid blush if you're looking for options and if you're especially bowling on budget again some other recommendation and then their sort of powder blushes that they also got, so I got mine, this is the Blush Crush, and this was in the shade Cool Berry. And this is how it looks like. So yeah, Essence was definitely another brand from that there was, uh, there's quite a lot from, but as I said with Essence, I tend to, I don't buy with Essence their limited edition stuff, just like with Catrice, so there's only like two times a year when I buy from both of the brands, and that's their like spring and uh, fall edits and that's usually when they're I think they also kind of do their better product formulations at least with Essence Spring. I actually do think that I like this uh, Essence Spring edit stuff much more than I try than the Catrice one that I tried now when I'm like thinking that how many products I like from Catrice versus Essence. Uh, let's now, then I will show just quickly the W7 Liquid Blush and Contours. These are quite new product to the market and uh, again these are actually something that I'm currently wearing and if you watched the first impressions video you have already seen like my thoughts about these but uh, if this is a W7 is brand that's easily accessible to you then again I would recommend maybe giving these a look and see that are these kind of products that you would like. Then let's go to maybe some, we are like slowly progressing to some mid-range, like I think mid-range mid -range makeup these days is definitely something that is slowly, I'm not gonna say like dying out completely, but because I, but because I do think that we are now having like quite good formulas in a drugstore and then if you are the kind of person that wants to spend on luxury makeup, then you're just gonna go buy luxury makeup. So I do think that with the current makeup trends, the sort of mid-range brands have been the like, the ones that have been like suffering quite a lot because there's always the argument that you can find something similar much cheaper or if you then really want to spend the money then you just go to the higher end luxury brand but um uh, I did, as I said, discover a few, like a month or so ago that Be Perfect, we actually have a retailer in my country, so some of these have been bought from the small store that's in our like city, but there is also one product that I did order online. So first one is the Full Impact Concealer. This is the concealer I'm currently wearing and I have been wearing for a while now. I did say that compared to the Chroma Concealer, I would like buy this one 100% <laughs> rather than the Chroma one. Uh, if you're looking for a good like a good evening out concealer, even though this is advertised matte concealer, I don't feel this is like too drying, especially compared to the Chroma Concealer that actually did look quite randomized. So if you're looking for a good medium coverage concealer that smooths out, this is a good something I would look into. Uh, then the sort of cheek products, so I got one of their Polar Vortex highlighters, so this is the uh, lilac shade, and I did praise this formula, I think, for the fact that it's not too shimmery, so it actually doesn't accentuate like texture, and this was in the shade Snow Angel, and I did warn out that this is actually something that's gonna be a bit purple on your eyes, not on your eyes, uh, on your cheekbones if you use this, but a very nice formula, especially if you have a bit more texture in your skin. Then I got one of their Scorch uh, blushes, so this is in the shade Melt, and these are more of a glowy blush, however, these are the kind of glowy blushes that I can wear because they aren't like glittery or like you would have like almost like a shiny eyeshadow on your cheeks, but this is the kind of glowy formula that I can wear, and this was again a very nice formula to work with. 
then I got their sort of contour stick and this is in the shade Maple. Another excellent, I would say, base product compared, especially if you consider my skin tone. So because I have a cool rosy undertone, this, this is actually quite of a perfect shade and again a very, very nice formula to work with. Then the palette, this is actually something quite new. So this is the Mrs. Glam palette and, uh, and this is the showstopper too. So they have had the... I don't know that, like, I'm not familiar with the influencer, but they have had the collaboration with the influencer previously. And this is a very, how should I say, a big palette. Uh, this was recently, I took this out of my two week rotation, and uh, I will be talking about this more in the collective review video. This will be included in later, but so far, I'd say for um, 37 euros that I pay for this, I do feel that I did get my money's worth. Uh, the cheek products, I can't use the bronzers, they are too, like, warm toned and too. Uh, deep from my liking, but the blushes, the small highlight that's over here, and the eyeshadows, I do think that they are like, this is very like, on a par as the, what is the price that this is being sold. Uh, is the sort of glittery, is this bit maybe tacky, that's up to maybe, <laughs> up up to out there for you to judge, but uh, uh, price-wise and what kind of products you're getting in this, I do think that I'm going, leaning towards the direction that I do actually like this. But yeah, uh, quite a lot of um, Be Perfect and I would say that yeah, it's a mid-range brand but actually for a mid-range brand I do actually feel that there's quite decent value in the products and I have been like, I actually have liked the, all the products so far that I got them from them so that's actually something I'm going to consider. Let's now go through the sort of indie eyeshadow palettes because then I will end this with the sort of luxury products so we're slowly progressing to them from like uh, drugstore mid-range to indie and even though one of the indie palettes is actually in the price of a luxury palette we will you will soon see, see that one so glam light i tried glam light first time uh during this sort of two two months period and i got two palettes in or in the form of two palettes so first one is the chucky palette so here is what the palette looks like and as i said if you like your grays and dark tones this is a good is it maybe a bit of a one tone palette because a lot of these shades kind of look similar once you get them to the eyes yes but i did say that this is actually like if you're looking for an indie formula to start out with that is priced quite like decently i would start with glam light because this i feel is a quite approachable formula to even someone who is a bit more inexperienced in terms of using more colorful or deeper shades but uh it may be one toned but i still did like this and then the more uh, other palette that I was perhaps even more impressed with was this one. So this is the Betty Boop palette. And especially I said that with this one was that I felt that the shimmers compared to the Jackie palette, like they were some kind of definitely an upgrade because uh, the mattes are as as nice and easy to work with as in the Jackie palette, but the shimmers, all of these are like, they have beautiful sparkle. There's even some bit more like duochrome, it's not, nothing like super shifty, but a bit of a shift there with some of the shades, but very beautiful. And I would say that this was the palette that sort of surprised because it kind of looks like a red palette, but you can actually do more than just red looks. And uh, this is a palette that I would actually like warmly recommend from the brand if you want to get it. Then the other two indie palettes, so I got the Kaima Cosmetics, uh, what is this, Skulls and Roses. So here is how this looks like, uh, another grungy, grungy Valentine's palette. Uh, I would recommend going to my collective eyeshadow palette review from five palettes that I tried. It's the most recent one on my review playlist to kind of see, because this wasn't exactly like a there were some good things about this and then there were some things that I didn't like about this. So if you want to sort of know my experience working with this one, then I would just watch that video. But if uh, there are some like, there is definitely like, for example, if you're looking for shifty shades, like all of the, almost all the shimmers have quite a strong shift to them. But I'd say as a color story wise, a very good start considering that this is a very small, I think one person run indie brand and they are like live in UK. And uh, I think they are up to a good start. They just have to do some refining with the formula. Then for the palette, I think if you watch my content, you probably know when I meant that there was one indie palette that's actually priced like a luxury brand. So this is the cool Cold Moon palette by Ensler Rain, and uh, it's it's so beautiful. Uh, I'm not gonna go draw over this on camera because you have probably like if you watched my collective eyeshadow palette review video, you know that I probably like went all oh, and. I'm about this one because it's just, it's uh, in terms of color story, in terms of formula, it's just like 
This is so far like the most impressive thing I have tried in terms of eyeshadow this year. However, I did want to make the con like notice in the, for example, in the eyeshadow palette review video that I wouldn't go collecting all of these. I would collect the ones that you actually like in terms of color story because at some point, considering how expensive these are, you will start getting maybe a bit similar shades. And uh, if you and if you're a person like me who has a limited makeup budget, then there might also be other things that you want to spend my on, spend your money on. But for me, this is like. Uh, this is so far like I think my Huda Beauty Rose Quartz uh, edition too, <laughs> like in terms of like, because as I discussed earlier in the same video, the Rose Quartz was, was at one year when it, when it was released, this was a palette that I wasn't like able to almost put down and it was just so, I was so, so enchanted by it and I think this is now so far has been the palette that I'm like constantly thinking that oh I wish, I, sometimes like I said think about it oh I wish I didn't have all this other makeup to try but I do actually enjoy like trying out more makeup this is kind of the palette that I'm thinking that when I'm having a bit slower slower time in terms of eyeshadow palettes I will be getting this again into my rotation because this is just absolutely beautiful but yeah those were the indie eyeshadow palettes and let's now get to the last of the most of the products, so now let's end this with some higher end uh, products that I did get into my collection. So, and I'm having some glitter in my finger, but that's uh, that's what you get when you show eyeshadow palettes. So, the Fenty Demi Glow Highlighter, this is in the shade uh, 02, too, too much. As I said, one of the smoothest, uh, smoothest like uh, powder highlighters I've tried for a while. Very impressed with this one. Uh, it is up to you. Do you want to spend this much money on the highlighter? Because these certainly aren't cheap and I would maybe just just buy one shade that suits you, but very beautiful formula and uh, I will be taking this out to my rotation again at some point. Then another expensive highlighter. So this is the Forever Glow, Ma Forever Glow Maximizer from Dior. These have been like going viral in quite many like if you watch any like luxury makeup reviews, then this, you have seen these. Uh, for me, as I said, this sort of pink shade, this suits me. It does leave a bit of a white cost to me. I don't think that I was as in love with this product as some other people have been. However, I did still say that if you want to spend this much money on a liquid highlighter, these are still a very good product to buy. But is this like going to change your life? I said that no, and you can certainly live without this one, but I'm still very happy that I got this and I do like this shade. And then the sort of last, this was sort of a uh, combination of a cheek and eye product. So this is the Dennis Myrix Groundworks 2 and this was the Blooming Romance. And uh, uh, works as an, uh, the pomades, the cream pomades work on eyes, works on cheeks. Uh, also, if you, if your brow color fits somewhere here, then you are able to use this to your brows or at least I have seen based on the first palette that you should be able to use the pomades also on your brows. I did discuss that I am a bit mixed about this one. I am quite happy that I finally got to try something from the Samarix and uh, I will certainly keep trying this out. But for me, this is more of a palette that I will be using for the cheeks and then as a complementary palette for my eyes because this only has matte shades, but as a complementary palette to my sort of special shade pink, like pink special shade palettes that I have from Indie Brands. This is actually a pretty good product and I did give this credit for the fact that the cream shades, they don't crease on your lids, which I was pretty afraid of, but yeah. Uh, definitely it was an interesting experience to like get to try something from the Smarvix and I would say that this is like high quality in terms of that if you're looking for quality makeup and you are vibing with this kind of a, like one product that does multiply, multiply, multiply functions, then this could be something to look into. But especially with this one, I would consider that uh, this doesn't offer quite a lot of contrast, even though it seems that it has a, contrast, a lot of contrasting shades, but um, these do tend to kind of blend in with each other quite easily. So it's just something to consider, but still very happy that I got this and will be using this more in the future. But um, I would like make like make the, you will have to make the decision for yourself that do you want this many like pinkish mauveish uh, shades or would you perhaps be better out with buying the more brownish one. But if you for example like the, like the first Groundworks palette then I don't think you will be disappointed with this one. But yeah, um, that was a lot of, a lot of makeup. Uh, I will emphasize at the end that uh, these makeup haul videos, these aren't meant to be a uh, way to brag. These are meant to be purely for like entertainment purposes. And I'm a person who has a full-time job, so there is a certain makeup budget that I have to abide to. 
And so it does fluctuate from monthly that how much makeup some, in some months I have more money to use so then I can like buy a bit more but in the same time I also have to be like responsible with my finances and on some months there's less products to buy and that's just how it goes and uh, I do think that anyone who works hard for their own, own like for their income it is good that if you're able to treat yourself occasionally but also nobody needs this like this much makeup so obviously this is a hobby for me that I like collecting and I do know that then there are like there are like other stuff that people collect and spend their money on I like to do it on makeup some people do it on other things but just as this is just something to consider that uh, this is something that I like do as a hobby and I pay pay like all of this for my own own hard earned money so uh, no one hasn't gifted me anything. I haven't got anything on PR. If the day happens, you will see it. Then there will be like you will be seeing it from the title and everywhere. But so far, this is just something that I like to do for fun, and you should like take it take it as that. Down below, that what did you think about this uh, this whole borders and products that you had gotten uh, during the couple of last months? Or has there been like other products you have hauled and have been getting the use out of? Or has there been some products that you hauled and were disappointed in? Like I would be, it would be good to share also us to rest of to know about that, that so we don't make the same same mistakes in terms of making the buying decisions. But if you like this video, then push the like button, subscribe to the channel, and ring the bell button if you want to get notifications from future content. You can also find me with the same nickname, Makeup Hedgehog on Instagram. I hope I will be seeing another video soon. Bye bye.